So again, my name is Diana Macri, and um, those letters there stand for Registered Dental Hygienist. I have a Bachelor's of Science in Dental Hygiene and um, uh, continued on and uh, have a Master's of Education. Um, that's important to say because uh, uh, the program that I'm teaching in is in a community college here in the South Bronx in New York, um, uh, Hostos Community College. I'm sure you know who um, Eugenia Maria de Hostos is in Puerto Rico. You have a beautiful um, facility devoted to this scholar. And so um, I have a very um, special group of students here. And not only um, a special group of students in terms of um, the quality of students, but also a very special program. And so I am able to do this with my students because the students in the dental hygiene program travel in cohorts. And so uh, the program is a two-year program, it's an associate's degree program. And because they travel in cohort, we, I have this opportunity to really engage with the students and to really do all this fun stuff um, that has proven so successful for me uh, in my life, uh, for me with my children. I'm a mom and I have um, three children, three sons that are older. And so when I had this opportunity to utilize this growth mindset practice with my students, it has uh, really been fruitful, very enjoyable thing for them and for me. And so I was really excited. This is my first time presenting on um, the little, um, you know, dabbling that I've done with growth mindset um, in our students here at Hostos. So uh, growth mindset is a huge, huge um, um, movement let's call it. Uh, and um, we could not possibly in the time that we have discuss everything about growth mindset. So I'm just going to give you a couple of little nuggets. I will talk to you about the um, CUNY Motivating Learners course. CUNY, C-U-N-Y, stands for the City University of New York. This is the largest um, urban education system, higher education system in the United States. It encompasses 24 colleges, and uh, I believe it's eight community colleges are uh, part of this CUNY system. And uh, CUNY as a um, university system has really invested in this growth mindset. Um, um, I'm going to keep calling it a movement because a uh, growth mindset is being applied in higher education, but certainly it is um, more a, of a philosophy, a behavioral philosophy of how we can really accomplish, um, um, how we can really perform to our greatest potential, let's say. Okay, so I'm going to review some basic tenets of growth mindset, identify the GPS, which is something um, special that we learned about the CUNY uh, Motivating Learners course. This is the um, three basic um, core of uh, growth mindset that they taught us at this course that I took at CUNY. I'm going to demonstrate how I applied growth uh, GPS in my dental hygiene course, and finally just share some perspectives of um, GPS. I welcome at any point, if anyone just wants to jump in, if you have any experience with growth mindset, um, if, there's, if I'm talking too fast or whatever, once I'm in this view, I can't really see you guys so well, so I really have uh, no problems if you want to jump in or um, I'm pretty good with the chat as well that I'll keep an eye on that chat. Um, for me, it's an exciting um, idea growth mindset and I um, love to hear other people's perspective about it as well. Okay, so let's start off with um, telling you a little bit about CUNY's um, Motivating Learners course. So as I said, um, the City University of New York is a large urban college system. And so each college operates independently, but we are under the higher banner of CUNY. And CUNY invested um, with Motivate Lab. Motivate Lab is a private, um, uh, should I call it a think tank? I don't know, a corporation think tank. And um, they have done a lot of work. If you just Google Motivate Lab, you'll see that they are not just focused on growth mindset. They really are um, a group of professionals that are just dedicated to, um, uh, you know, just growth on a personal level. And somehow they got connected with CUNY. They created this course for educators and it was called Motivating Learners Starting Strong. Um, just as a background, I, as a, uh, just as a human being, was introduced to uh, Carol Dweck's course, uh, uh, Carol Dweck's book, which is called Growth Mindset. It's been around for quite a while, and um, I just picked it up. Uh, you know, it looked like an interesting book, and um, she also has a very famous TED Talk where she talks about this growth mindset. She's the one who really originated um, this idea of growth mindset. So when I saw that CUNY was investing in it, I was very excited about it and, uh, you know, kind of um, all in 
to see how I could possibly um, incorporate this in my classes. And so that course started in January 2021, and it was really just a very beautifully done course excellent um, teachers there, which showed us as faculty how we could incorporate in very small but significant ways this growth mindset mentality for our students. Um, why did I think that growth mindset would um, uh, be very good at hostos? Uh, so we know for sure uh, white students and underrepresented minority students show an equal level of interest in STEM careers when they enter college. However, underrepresented minority students encounter poorly understood barriers to successfully completed um, to successfully completing STEM degrees. And what happens is, is that what I have experienced with my students, they are very talented, they're very driven, they're very um, excited and interesting um, uh, to get into these careers, but they have barriers. And a lot of the barriers that they come into is um, things that they're not even aware that it's a barrier. Something like writing an email um, properly, something like understanding all the different um, uh, departments available to them that are here to help them be successful um, in their careers. This is something that Growth Mindset talks about as well. Also, growth mindset will talk about um, students kind of not feeling like they belong. And so colleges have a lot to contend with in terms of, first of all, attracting the talent, attracting these students to come in, but then also retaining them. We all, all, all know um, the uh, terrible statistics about uh, retention with students in community colleges. So there is a little disconnect there. And it's my view that growth mindset can really help to uh, bridge those barriers, kind of close um, uh, those gaps a little bit by making students feel like they do belong here. You, we do want you here. You do have help here. There's a lot of things that we can do to help you. And you don't have to drop out. You never, ever have to drop out. Um, so Hostess is a very special place. We're serving the South Bronx. Let me go back to that slide because my stats were on that slide. So we have um, our stats for our students is 22% of our students are uh, African-American, 66% of our students are Hispanic, Latino, 66% are female, and 66% are from the Bronx. For me, as a healthcare provider, um, the Bronx is the uh, poorest in terms of health statistics. So me as an educator, me as a healthcare provider, I, I'm in a place that I'm really needed. My students are in a place where they're really needed. And the, this status of 66% Hispanic and 66% female, for me as a Latina tambien, also um, hits close to home, okay? And so uh, I'm very invested in my student success uh, on very different levels uh, as a Hispanic woman, as a Hispanic, as a woman, and also uh, with this healthcare issue, because we have very poor health outcomes uh, here in the Bronx. My students are very special, okay? Um, this is a picture of us at graduation day uh, a few years ago. They are um, intelligent, smart, vibrant, um, just getting into healthcare, okay? They have a high level of internal motivation. Uh, they are resilient, okay? They have been struggling. Before they get to me into the dental hygiene program, they have already done a year of prerequisites. And uh, those prerequisites are science-based courses, two biology courses and two chemistry courses. So I am aware that I have a, a very special pool of students that I can work with, okay? I don't work with the students that are coming into those gateway courses, uh, English or history or something like that. And I'm very, very lucky because they travel as a cohort. So we do have that opportunity to create a relationship and so we see very high retention. Once the students get into the dental hygiene program, uh, we don't let them go. So we see uh, much higher retention rates once you are in the dental hygiene program. And so this possibility for me to incorporate some of these growth mindset um, principles is very possible given the special group of students that I have. And I'm aware of it. I'm aware of it. So what is a growth mindset? It, is, um, it was a phrase that uh, Carol Dweck came up with, and it refers to a person's belief that skills and abilities can develop, especially through hard work, trying challenging things, learning from failure, and adjusting strategies to accomplish goals. So what that means, I do think that those of us, I'm in middle age, so once you get to be uh, middle age, you do kind of see, uh, you realize that, you know what, I got to where I got to because I didn't give up. Essentially for me, that's what growth mindset means. 
I didn't give up. And guess what? Along the way, I learned new things as I kept going. So my capacity to learn never stopped. As a matter of fact, my capacity to learn keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the more that I keep going and the more that I learn, the more that I'm able to share, the better my life is. At its core, that's what growth mindset is. And so we want our students to adopt these growth mindset principles. And while sometimes a student uh, walks the walk, sometimes they can't talk the talk, and sometimes they can't really um, understand why they're successful. And it's important for them to stop and reflect and to think about the things that they are doing that are contributing to their success, because obviously we as faculty want them to focus on those characteristics and then also to um, define those characteristics that they're missing. All right. So when we adopt a growth mindset, we're more likely to stick with things, uh, to stick with things longer, to perform better and enjoy what we're doing more than when we believe our skills and abilities are fixed. I do hope that here at Hostos, um, we do have a center for teaching and learning. Um, I think Carlos Guevara is there. I don't know if he's uh, in the audience now, but he is our director for the Center for Teaching and Learning. And we are trying to get more faculty um, to kind of adopt, adopt these growth mindset principles because we do believe that um, um, CUNY made a wise, wise investment um, in these uh, methodologies. So those with a growth mindset at the core believe that um, making mistakes is normal. They believe that those challenges are part of the learning process and they actually welcome those challenges with an open heart and, and, and mind. When we talk about mindset GPS, this acronym, this GPS is something that's individual to motivate labs. So what I mean by that is that when you talk, when, when Carol Dweck's book, if you read her book and if you see some of the things that she has done, um, she does not really refer to GPS. This was something that Motivate Labs um, created, okay? And, and me as part of CUNY and Motivate Labs course, this is how they kind of um, had us focus on growth mindset in the education um, sector, let's say. And GPS stands for growth, purpose and relevance and sense of belonging, okay? So the idea here is, is that I as a faculty need to focus on three things for my students. Uh, encouraging growth, uh, uh, the sense of purpose and relevance and uh, the sense of belonging as well. So uh, interventions, what they taught us as faculty is that I as a faculty ought to create specific interventions, um, mindfully, deliberately create these interventions to help my students develop a growth mindset. I need to along the way, make sure that they understand that learning takes effort and that you don't learn things. This is when my um, degree in education comes in handy because I was already aware of that. You know, sometimes our students want to learn things right away. Well, learning doesn't happen that way. Um, learning happens very individually for our students, and uh, they should not be frustrated if they didn't learn something when the teacher thought, taught it. In fact, uh, all of us will learn differently in different speeds, and it's totally okay. We just have to be aware of our process and how um, we can tweak behaviors that help us learn better and longer. Um, uh, and this process of seeking help when needed. So that's the other part of a growth mindset is that I have to open myself up to the very real reality, to the reality that I need help. All of us need help. Wherever we got these bad habits, these programs that we got that we need to do things on our own, we never need to do anything on our own. And certainly here at Hostos, forgive me, I think I'm talking too fast. Certainly here at Hostos, um, we have so many resources for our students and they are not aware that we have those resources. And so I, as a faculty, need to be conscious of that, um, help our students identify what resources they need and connect them to those resources. Growth mindset interventions provide students with scientific information about how the brain changes. Um, this is the concept of neuroplasticity. And uh, this video that they gave us is excellent, which explains to students that, you know, when you create new pathways um, in, in the brain, you need to exercise those pathways by continually seeing things from a new perspective. So it's a process of training. It requires discipline as well. And so creating these new pathways through challenge, failure, and subsequent learning, falling on our faces is part of the learning process. And we need to open ourselves up to that and be grateful for those opportunities. This is a difficult thing for students. They don't like 
um, when they are, um, they don't like when they understand that. They don't like when they understand, okay, I didn't do good here. And instead of beating myself up, what I need to do is uh, uh, be open to that process and, and grateful for that process, okay? So uh, giving students a growth mindset message plus study, study strategy lessons compared to simply giving students study strategy lessons. So what the growth mindset tells us is, is that the student has to be aware of what they're doing, okay? Before taking this course, I did have a, um, a little thing that I did with my students. We have an orientation and I used to um, go over effective study strategies for my students. And I used to tell them, A, B, C, right? I used to tell them the best way to take notes is to write the notes out and the best way this and the best way that. And that's all well and good, right? I was doing the second part of it, but quite honestly, um, you have the student themselves has to make that connection themselves, okay? And so I now as a faculty give them an opportunity first to learn that about themselves. And then I introduce some of those strategies in there as well, okay? Always, uh, it comes from the students first. They do have to make that connection. They do have to understand that first. And then I as a teacher will give them the opportunities that they need. So that is a growth mindset of GPS. The P part of GPS has to do with purpose and relevance. The students must find meaning and purpose in the classes that they're taking. They must make a connection between what they're learning and how it's going to affect them uh, in their careers, in their future. Okay, that's very easy for me as a dental in this dental hygiene program because virtually everything that we do is connected to their purpose as dental hygienists, but they have to make the connection of the purpose and relevance. Okay, sometimes, for example, in the class, they have to take pharmacology. In a class like pharmacology, it's difficult for the students to say, yeah, I really do need to know why, you know, these, these, this class of drugs is um, deleterious for my patients or harmful for my patients or how it can affect the mouth. It's not always easy to make those connections, but it is important. And that is the second part of the GPS, purpose and relevance. And this is just a slide. I love this slide that they actually gave to us and allowed us to use. And it shows you the difference between um, a, a student that is operating from uh, um, just a mindset of, okay, this is what I need to do because this is what I need to do, or a student that sees the larger purpose and the value of the work that they're doing. Um, so the mindset is if a student doesn't see the larger purpose, they will um, say to themselves, you know what, I just need to get through this course and um, I'm, I'm just going to do this and it's done. Versus the mindset of, you know what, this is something that I need to do because it's important for my career in the future and I need to go through this process um, for that reason, not for like you can think of this as external versus internal motivation, right? The external motivation is, okay, I'm going to do this because I want to get an A, or the internal motivation would be, I need to do this. I need to learn how to do this. I need to go through this process and, um, and be open. So uh, distractions arise out of the blue. When, when a student does not have a strong sense of purpose and relevance, they'll get very um, distracted by things. However, a student that really has a strong sense of purpose and relevance will engage in that process of learning because they're aware of how important that is um, to their careers and so on and so forth. And the final part of the GPS is a sense of belonging. And this is a very big deal for our students here at Hostos. Okay, they come in and they sometimes they come in and they don't know what they want to do. They just know that they want to be in college. They know that they want to learn. And once they come in, um, they're faced with like a lot of new processes. And, and especially with this COVID, you got to scan this and you got to show me that, that and all these things are happening. And it's very discouraging that they feel like they don't belong. Okay. And um, in addition to feeling like they don't belong, they don't vocalize that that's how they're feeling at that moment. They feel frustrated and they leave and they're done. The other day in the hallway, I had a student, she was running late for her class. She didn't know where the class was. She only spoke Spanish and thankfully I speak enough Spanish to get me through. And um, just the relief. So I, I didn't just tell her where to go. I actually walked her because that's, I was going that way anyway. And you know, the sense of relief that she felt, I think, not just from finding the classroom that she had to get to, but, you know, there was somebody here that actually walked me and took the time to take me to where I need to go. This is a very valuable experience for that student because in the future now, it's my hope. And I said this to her, I said, you know, whenever you have a problem, public safety will always come and help you. We have 
awesome public safety folks here. And so she, she seemed relieved by that. And so our students are really um, need to feel like they belong. They need to feel like this is the place for them and that they can succeed. That will um, have a lot to do with how well they do uh, in their college careers. So how did I start incorporating um, this? Well, first of all, I started realizing that the activities that I do in order to encourage this in my students have to be a little bit more deliberate and they have to be a little bit more focused. I have to you know, start off with a, with a process. I can't just throw a lesson at them and good luck. Okay, I did it. I'm such a great faculty, blah, 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 right? I have to kind of um, do some deliberate things. Um, and so what did I start doing? Um, Okay, this is just more slides talking about growth mindset, about how I encourage with them that this is really, this is kind of like the banner um, that I would use for my students and kind of um, another slide that I really like, reminding myself about what it is that I want my students, the, the big thing that I really want my students to adopt is stick with it. Okay, when you have challenges, you, you need to get over it. And there's people here that will help you and you will be able to do this, which I think is their biggest challenge. Okay, so that instead of saying, um, uh, you know, um, some of the things that they told us about in the course as well, were that I myself as a teacher sometimes send them the wrong message, right? So a wrong message would be um, if the student didn't do well on an exam, well, not everyone can get an A, just, just try and do better next time. That's not encouraging a growth mindset. What is encouraging a growth mindset is for me to ex uh, encourage the student to um, reflect on that experience, okay? So let's take a look at where you went wrong and um, uh, you made a mistake, the mistake is not bad, but let's learn from this mistake. What is it that we can learn uh, from this uh, mistake? Challenge, however you want to uh, perceive it, okay? So these are some of the foundational elements uh, in the course that I took. What they encouraged us to do is to kind of focus on one of them and create an activity um, around it. In the very beginning, what I felt that I wanted to start out with was this sense of belonging, okay? Uh, my students have a very strong purpose and relevance. Um, I'll tell you what I decided to do but in, in the future, but I started off with this kind of sense of belonging. And how I did it was that I decided to focus on my syllabus. So uh, in dental hygiene, we have, it's a very heavy scientific component, and my syllabus is a monster of a syllabus. It is 16 pages of learning objectives and um, uh, um, standards of practice, and it, it's, it's an extremely intimidating document, okay? A lot of scientific, a lot of words in there, a lot of science in there. And so I decided to focus in the fall semester on my um, syllabus, changing my syllabus and making it more friendly to increase that sense of belonging for my students. And so very, very little simple things that we could do is um, put the very first thing off, very first page on my syllabus is this very big welcome. Right, um, and I wish that I, I really, what I should have shown you is the syllabus before. <laughs> and for you to see it now that now the first page of my syllabus is this big old welcome sign and I'm congratulating them on making it to senior year. Because remember they travel in a, in a cohort two years. So it's a freshman year and a senior year and I'm getting them as they come into the senior year. And congratulations on making it onto DEN 219. And the very first thing that I have here is a statement assuring them that I am committed to their success, that I am here for them, and that I'm happy that they're here. And that right off the bat um, puts, uh, you know, brings, brings the walls down a little bit. And of course, I do this with the students um, together. So they do have access to the syllabus before we meet, but then during orientation, I spent the first day of class reviewing the entire syllabus and answering any questions. And so now we've broken down a lot of walls. I get to talk about, um, uh, my philosophy, which is, as you can see, very growth uh, mindset oriented. And uh, now the students have a little bit of oomph that they can move forward. Now I need to continue this, right? Throughout the semester, I need to continue um, sending this message home and uh, being available to them and um, uh, encouraging uh, this attitude all throughout the semester. And it's not as easy as you would think, okay? Because while I can do it, um, you know, very kind of, um, I don't want to say anecdotally, but I can do it very unofficially. What they encouraged us in the course is to create targeted assignments, targeted interventions to do so that I can what? I can assess it, okay? 
And so I did this uh, thing and you wouldn't believe like how um, fruitful it was for me as a faculty to go through this process because it shows that I'm that the process of assessment is something also that um, I as a faculty should really be um, embedded in because how do I know things work? I could think that growth mindset is the greatest thing I've ever done ever, 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 but I do need some proof. And um, you know, assessment is an important part of the process. So I did this whole thing with my syllabus. I put this activity together and I created a follow-up um, assessment of the experience to make sure that this was as fruitful an experience as I thought that it was. And um, I use Google Forms to do all my assessments. I'm very familiar with how to work that. My students really like it. They can just you know, click on the link. And so I created this survey to ask them, how was this experience? Did you like that I reviewed it? What did you think of the syllabus? Give me your feedback. And they were so generous with their feedback. And um, on the right side here, you can see that um, they were so sweet. They either thought that the um, syllabus was very good or that it was excellent. And then there's also a section where they could actually um, tell me what it is that they liked about it and what I should fix. And, um, and so now I have this experience that I created and it kind of just as a faculty makes me feel like, okay, I'm on the right track. Uh, this is not breaking any sort of research records, like, you know, the most unbelievable uh, thing that I did here, but as a faculty, it gives me a little bit of um, confidence to move forward into the next step of what I have to do uh, next. Um, okay, so now for this semester, um, CUNY had a follow-up. So uh, the first class that CUNY did was in uh, January, 2021. And then uh, January 22, a few weeks ago, we had the second part of this course. And so now I put my little toe in the water and things were kind of fun and exciting. And so now what I'm planning now for the uh, full semester now as they come in is that I need to um, go ahead and create a whole growth mindset. You remember that what I did um, last semester was just work on the S portion of GPS, the sense of belonging, and now I'm going to work on the growth mindset part. And this time I'm really going to really get into it. I'm going to create a growth mindset pre-survey and the, the Motivate Lab folks gave us a copy of that survey and it looks very good and it kind of goes something like, um, uh, the students will have to answer the survey and they'll have to say something. Um, um, I believe that struggling is part of the learning process or uh, I don't believe that struggling or I become frustrated when I don't learn things. You know, these are the kinds of questions they'll have. And then that uh, neuroplasticity video that I, that I was talking about before, I'm going to show them this video and have them do an entire reflection on that video. Once again, the Motivate Lab folks have this available. They gave me the entire reflection exercise. It wasn't anything that I had to even create on my own. And um, once they go through that reflection, they're going to get the growth mindset post survey again. And in that way, I'll be able to see if that activity fostered a growth mindset um, in the students. And so I hope I'll come back next year and let you know how that went. Um, and finally, I had intended originally to put a whole bunch of sources here uh, for you guys. Unfortunately, I didn't get that far um, in the original um, presentation that I had given the organizers. Uh, this is a live link um, if you want to click on that. Um, I, I know that speakers say this all the time, but please, you have my email. If at any time you want to just contact me, I will be very happy to share all the sources that the Motivate Lab gave to us because it's so much that they gave us. The activities, they have already done the activities. They, they give you the videos. They give you the reflection. They give you the surveys. It's uh, just a beautiful experience um, working with them. And um, as I said, on a very anecdotal basis, I see that my students are getting it. Um, and I see that this is a worthwhile effort. Uh, it is my intention once I do a few more of this to kind of publish this kind of work and to, but again, I'm so grateful to be here with you all today because I get to at least um, share it with you. And I hope uh, like-minded people here that um, understand why this is uh, a beneficial um, practice for our students. And with that, I am done and open to any questions or comments or any feedback at all. Uh, thank you, Dr. Macri, for such a great presentation and sharing with us the importance of growth mindset practices for student success. 
We invite you to take advantage of, it, uh, advantage of this moment and fill the evaluation for this session. There is a QR code that you can scan in order to access the evaluation. For the virtual participants, the, the link is in, to the evaluation is in the chat. Please make sure uh, you select the time and date of this session. After completing the evaluation, we will use the last 10 minutes for a Q&A. If you have a question, you can raise your hand. The virtual participants may use the chat or mute their microphone. And, and if you wish uh, to, 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 contact the, to contact Dr. Murphy, you can mm -hmm. uh, write down her contact information uh, for further questions, if further questions are right. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was a real pleasure.